Could a Red Sox pitcher win a Cy Young Award on the way to a Red Sox filled October? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and what better way to kick off the 2024 regular season than with the hottest Red Sox takes known to man? I asked you, the viewer, right now who's watching this video last Sunday, what your hot takes were about the Boston Red Sox going into the 2024 season, and you guys gave us a whole lot of them, and we're going to try and get through all of them today because in today's video, what we are going to do is we are going to go through as many hot takes as humanly possible. I'm going to tell you why I agree or disagree with this hot take and we're also going to use this as an opportunity to talk about what these hot takes could indicate about the state of Red Sox Nation but before we get into that do me a favor if you're new here make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button we talk Red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it so what I did is I asked this exact question on YouTube and Twitter, and you guys gave us a ton of different responses. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them in this video, but I'm going to try my best to mix and match a little bit. We're going to start over on Twitter from Casas Defender, where he says, we actually had pitching. We just had an awful pitching coach. And honestly, so far, it's pretty hard to disagree with this one. How many times over the last couple of years have we said this exact sentence? Blank has the potential to take a next step forward. We just need to see him get there whether you're talking about Tanner Howe, Garrett Whitlock or Cutter Crawford and even guys like Pavetta and Bayo I think that exact sentence has been said about just about everyone in this Red Sox rotation right now and for a while it felt like they just never were going to take that next step maybe it was just the Red Sox needed a different approach and maybe that guy is Andrew Bailey maybe he's the right fit for this team specifically and so far it's really hard to argue with the results you're getting on the field so as of right now I think I'm going to to agree with this one but in my opinion the most important thing we need to see from this rotation going forward is consistency they have the talent can they do it over 162 games the next one i'm moving over to youtube here and this one's coming from scott who says that roman anthony gets the call up after the all-star break and slashes 300 400 and 500 in the second half of the year listen i love roman anthony as the prospect but i'm gonna have to disagree here and there's a reason for that it's because the red sox have a bit of a luxury right now with their timeline on outfielders, specifically with guys like Anthony and Blaze. Because of the additions of Tyler O'Neill and say Don Rafaela, they can afford to be a bit more patient than they normally would with a guy like Roman Anthony and allow him to truly develop at his own pace. Because of this, I don't think we see Roman Anthony in 2024, especially if, say, Don and Tyler O'Neill continue to produce at the plate for the Boston Red Sox. Now, there is a possibility that he just flat out is ready for Major League Baseball, but I think it's going to be in the later half of the year, possibly at best case scenario, in my opinion, would be September call-ups, and I think we see him more in 2025. So while I love Roman Anthony, the prospect, I do think at some point he could have the potential to have a slash line like that. I don't think it's this season, and I don't think it's through for an entire half going back to twitter here chris says we're going to lead the league in stolen bases I'm going to agree. I think you look at what the Red Sox have right now, and maybe they don't lead the entire Major League Baseball, but the American League, you've got burners on the base pass right now. Jaron Duran, Tyler O'Neill, and Sedan Rafaela are all very legitimate stolen base threats for at least 20 stolen bases this season. You've got sort of underrated speed guys like Story and Connor Wong, who could be a bit of a threat on the base pass. The Red Sox are trying to be more athletic. They are trying to be a bigger threat on the base pass as well as in the batter's box. And I think that ends up working out pretty well for them. So I'm going to agree with this one and say maybe not all of Major League Baseball. I'm going to assume he meant the American League. And I'm going to absolutely agree with this. This one's from Sox Content on YouTube. And he says Casas will finish with 30 home runs and 100 walks. Now, last year for Tristan Casas, he played 132 games. He had 25 home runs and 70 stolen bases. If he plays around the similar amount here, that's an addition of five home runs and 30 walks. In my opinion, I think 30 home 
home runs is absolutely achievable for Tristan Casas. We know what that power looks like. We know what he looks like once he figures it out and really gets going at the plate. It's like a ball rolling down a hill, right? You just simply can't stop it once it gains that momentum. So I do think 30 home runs is absolutely attainable. 100, 100 walks is really, really difficult. Right now, he's on pace for about 60 if he played every single game this season. He's going to have to cut down on the strikeouts a little bit, but because I love Casas and I really think he could be someone special in the batter's box for years to come, I'm going to agree with this take. It's going to have to take a quick turnaround at the plate over the next coming weeks because if he has an April like he had last year, I just don't think this is attainable unless he goes absolutely God mode for the second half of the season. So I'm going to go with a tentative agree on this one. I do think this one, especially the walks, are going to be really difficult to attain. I do think he hits 30 home runs though. Andrew King on Twitter says, even if the Red Sox starting pitching stays healthy and pitches well, all of them are going to be in uncharted waters in innings pitched come September and they will need help down the stretch. 100% agree with this. This is a big reason why the addition of Lucas Giolito was so important at the beginning of the year, right? Because there were so many question marks as to where these innings were going to come from. The highest amount of innings last year, I believe, was 157 from Brian Bayo when we saw what he looked like in the back half of that 157. It is absolutely going to be a flat-out mystery what this team's going to look like from this starting rotation come August and September, even if they're pitching as well as they're pitching right now because it's just never happened for this rotation before outside of maybe Nick Pavetta. It's going to be entirely unknown and they probably will need help come September. But what I will say is that I do think Craig Breslow will absolutely be aggressive come the trade deadline if the Red Sox are still involved. If they're two or three games out of a wild card spot or in a wild card spot or somehow by some miracle they're leading the division, I do think Craig Breslow will be aggressive in adding. I also think he'd be aggressive in removing as well if they're fully out. So I have faith that Craig Breslow does get this team some backup. But yes, I absolutely agree that it is uncharted territory come August, September. And I do think they will need some backup at some point. Max's hot take is Devers will win MVP after hitting 45 home runs. I think Devers is absolutely 100% capable of hitting 45 home runs. I think that's something we will see from Rafael Devers at some point in his career. However, winning the MVP is going to be really difficult for him. It's because of his defense. If his defense doesn't get to, I would say, even slightly better than league average, it's going to be hard for him to win an MVP. His offensive season is going to have to essentially be historical for him to get that award. So I think I'm going to have to disagree on this one just because I don't see Devers becoming a above league average defensive third baseman. But I do see him, if he does hit 45 home runs, in that top 10 MVP category. It's just hard for a third baseman to win without that really stellar defense. And that's the only reason I'm disagreeing with this one. Next one up is from Brian, who says that Trevor Story's leadership is going to be one of the main reasons for this team's development and surprising success. This one's a tough one for me. I actually think that his leadership is 100% going to be important to what the Red Sox are doing this year. We talked about it in our sort of series preview a little bit. They're going to have to essentially will themselves into competition this year, right? Right? They're not the most talented team on paper. They're going to have to work as one individual unit. And Trevor Story's leadership is going to be a big part of that. But I also think what's going to be even bigger is the fact that his leadership is also going to need to translate to on-field success. If Trevor Story has a season at the plate like he did last year, it's going to be tough for him to be the true leader of this clubhouse because he's just not getting it done on the field. I think this is sort of a hand-in-hand -hand situation here. I'm going to agree tentatively with this one, but but with the caveat to be a true leader on the Boston Red Sox, you're going to also need to be able to back that up on the field, which I do think Trevor Story is fully capable of. We just need to see it happen. Red Sox win on YouTube. Nick Pavetta, Cy Young. Short, simple, to the point. I absolutely love this. This is just a flat out blanket statement. I'm a big fan of this one. And I do think Nick Pavetta is going to have a career year, mostly fueled by the fact that his future is on the line right now. If he pitches really well in 2024, he can cement himself as a big league starter and earn big league starter money. If he can't, well, then there's going to be some questions as to whether or not he's sort of a bulk innings bullpen guy or if he's a back end starter and he's going to lose himself a lot of money. But what does a career year look like for Nick Pavetta? And is it enough to put him in the AL Cy Young conversation? 
that's going to be a bit difficult, in my opinion, right? Because you've got other pitchers in the AL like Corbin Burns, Tariq Skubal, Justin Verlander's out there somewhere. Whoever the Tampa Bay Rays pull out of thin air this year, there's going to be a whole lot of truly established aces in the American League over the 2024 season. Kind of like I said with Devers, it's going to have to take a really, really special year from Nick Pavetta. Is it possible? Yes. Do I think it's likely? Absolutely not. So I'm going to say disagree on this one. But I do think we see a career year from Nick Pavetta because of that incentive that he's playing for his future. Just a couple more submissions here. I don't want this video ending up being a 30 minute long episode. We got a lot of submissions about Tyler O'Neill in this question, mostly because I asked it after basically right after he hit that opening day home run. But still, I do think this is an important one to talk about, specifically from Chef on Twitter, who says that Tyler O'Neill was the right handed bat we've been calling for all offseason. Him, say Don and Jaron Duran are going to be the most athletic outfield in the league. Absolutely agree, at least with this first part here. I've been saying it all offseason. We're starting to see it during the regular season. Tyler O'Neill's the Red Sox X Factor, right? He is the guy that could take this offense to the next level and really make it a deep and dangerous lineup in Major League Baseball. A lot like Adam Duvall did for the 2023 Red Sox last year. The difference is that Tyler O'Neill is younger, he's more dynamic, and he's a whole lot faster. So we can affect the game in other areas that Adam Duvall just physically could not. The big question is going to be whether or not he can stay healthy, but if he stays healthy, I absolutely 100% agree that he is the right-handed power bat the Red Sox are missing. As for the second part of this one, saying that the Red Sox with O'Neal, Duran, and Rafaela are going to be the most athletic outfield in the entire sport. I think there's a chance that that's possible, right? If we're just talking about pure athleticism, I think they could be one of the most purely athletic outfields in the entire game, but it is going to be tough to put them up against a outfield like the Braves with Ronald Acuna and Michael Harris. It's also going to be tough to put them up against even guys in our own division like Soto and Judge. Those are going to be really hard in terms of actual performance to put them up against, but if we're just purely talking about athleticism, I think it is the Boston Red Sox having a really good chance at being number one in that category and the final one here comes in from joe and they say a majority of games will be nail biters with the magic of netflix the red sox will make the playoffs I don't think we've really factored in the magic of Hollywood in this, in anything we've talked about this offseason. And who knows, right? Hollywood does do some funny things sometimes. And maybe the Red Sox being followed around by Netflix either themselves wills them to a postseason. Or hey, maybe Netflix gives a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink to Major League Baseball and says, wouldn't it be really cool if this Cinderella story took place all on camera? I don't know. That's kind of a deep cut conspiracy here, but I'm all for deep cuts conspiracy. So I'm going to agree with this one. And the magic of Netflix is going to carry the Boston Red Sox into the postseason. I think that one is absolutely fantastic. But those are the submissions we're talking about in today's video. Again, I thank you everyone who decided to give a Red Sox hot take for the 2024 season. I do apologize if I wasn't able to get to your hot take in this video. I promise you we will be doing more of these as the season rolls on. But as for the third question I asked in that intro, what does this indicate about Red Sox Nation right now? These were pretty majority overwhelmingly positive. Even the sort of kind of negative ones were still pretty positive. I think what this indicates about the Red Sox fan base right now is they want to be positive. You want to be positive about what this team can do because it is pretty exciting how they've started this 2024 season so far, but it's just so early and we've been so beat down over the last couple of months by how things went this offseason that it's still a hot take to be positive on the Boston Red Sox. I think people are coming around a little bit, though, to what this team could be, and I think we're seeing the indications of that in these Red Sox hot takes, but that's just my opinion. So in the comment section down below, let me know what you think about these hot takes. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Are there ones you agree with, ones you absolutely despise? And what do you think this indicates about how Red Sox Nation is feeling right now? Do you agree with me or disagree? Let me know all your thoughts on Red Sox 2024 hot takes in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, like I said in the intro, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button or that like button as it helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the red seats.